So hi guys. So you know, those of you that have watched my Mason B videos to this point, I wanted to bring you into the source or one of the sources, and this is K and B Mason B's, and this is Carl. <laughs> Carl and Carl, how do you beat that? And I'm gonna give you a little bit more education on some alternatives with Mason B houses um, versus the tubes that I have in my colony at home. Um, Carl basically makes these. So I will let you take over at this point, Carl, and basically explain how your little hotel works for our little friends. You betcha. Okay. Well, first of all, all our materials, repurposed or recycled material, uh, including the plastic, which is uh, some old graphics. We got raw cedar. We got repurposed cedar here. The outside is water, water-based exterior stain that helps these houses last for years and years, a full slate roof. And the reason I use cedar boards in the middle here is because cedar's a nice open, open cell wood that will wick excess water away from the mud walls so that the pollen does not, will not mold inside. The other Carl is showing us our blocks here. Here's our blocks. And as you can see, we have squares instead of square slots, instead of round holes. And two things, uh, the bees don't mind. They don't care if it's <laughs> round or square. And I also found out that in a square hole, or in a square, the square is 25% bigger than your round circle. So our bee has a chance to turn around if they need to, because some of the, hole, some of the, tu the holes in the tubes are so small that the female bee, which is of course the larger, who carries all the eggs, uh, will have to back out of the tube. And so she has a tendency or a possibility of tearing her wings, which means that she can't fly or have, won't have a problem flying. So they can turn around here and we've seen them go in and come face out, which is no problem for them. They like it. Uh, and again, the cedar will wick any moisture out uh, from when they make the mud walls because of course you need soil and water to make the wood the mud uh, These plastic plates the bees don't care about them. They think it's just fine And it's easy enough to put back together and take apart and again uh, To harvest the cocoons we suggest harvesting the cocoons so that you can have a cleaner uh, easier time uh, keeping the house clean and keeping the cocoons free of mites or funguses uh, or the um, chop brood, which is prevalent in a lot of colonies. So um, once you take this apart, and of course each of our houses comes with instructions so that it shows you how to wash, and we do use the bleach in the water system, and it seems to work. We haven't had any problems with it. Uh, one thing we do do though is we have a bee shield. It's called BS. <laughs> And so nice. we can give you BS and we do this at the end of their season and everybody says as well for mid-June or mid-March to mid-June is the Mason Bee season but sometimes it runs a little bit later. Okay. I suggest we put these on after the 4th of July. It's very simple. It gives you an easy mental um, contact to say oh it's after the 4th of July. It's simple. And we do this to keep any squirrels out, woodpeckers, and or wasps or other things that can't get in there to infect the, uh, the bees that are nesting inside here because their season's over they've already uh, laid all their eggs and, and the bees have died off so what's the spring season bee so what's the season carl real thumb mid mid march to mid june mid march to mid june and it's uh, most of the time they've laid all their eggs already. A so female will carry up to 35 eggs. Thir wow, one female up one to 35 female. days. And how much can they pollinate on a day? How many f flower heads? They say between 12 and 1500, but sometimes more. So 12 to 1500? Yes, they need to uh, hit a lot of flowers because they make balls of pollen the size of a pencil eraser. To feed each egg that she lays on there and that's very important you can see how large they are okay and that's, that's their food source pollen. that's their food source and okay. all all she cares about is feeding the eggs that she's going to lay okay so talk a little about the eggs 
that's the, the main focus on this, right? Uh, yes, it is. As you can see here, here's the mud walls, and here's the here's the pollen, and here's the egg that she's laid on there. And then they move forward, build another wall, and keep going. One of the interesting things about this bee species is that they're determined. They determine the sex of the bees. So at the back of each of the uh, slots here, she'll build a wall, bring in the pollen ball, and set an egg on it and move forward. In doing that, she will determine the sex of it, putting females at the back and males at the front. The males at the front- Really? Is, yes. Males wow. At, males at the front is very important for two reasons. The males will always emerge first. As you can see in this photo, these dots on the front of the house is bee poo, but it's also a natural attractant for when the female chews out, she will come back and sense those pheromones and know that that's a home to come to. The other reason is predators. If an, an open cell, uh, there's always predators in a natural world. And these predators will be flickers or woodpeckers, anything with a long beak. They'll have a tendency to want to eat the, the bird, the cocoons, and they will only take out the males. Their beaks are not long enough to reach the females, so we'll always have bees. Yes. And that's a wonderful thing. So the eggs. So we harvest the eggs about what time of year? Uh, they will they will start growing as soon as they uh, latch onto the food source. Okay. And around August September, they will start spinning that cocoon so for overwintering. It'll take them a couple of months to uh, solidify that cocoon. But by December, January, we start uh, harvesting the cocoons and overwintering them. Then. Okay, so this is what the harvest eggs are going to look like. Yes. And Although some of these have holes, these are these are ones that have already chewed out in the springtime. Although there are some solid ones in there. So the solid ones are the key ones we're looking yes. for here for harvest. Yes. So what happens to the one where they get out? They're just they're no good. They're gone. That's last year's crop. Last year's crop. Right. Okay. So the good ones we harvest. Yes. Um, this will look like this. After, okay. These are your cell blocks, and these are the cocoons with the mud walls in here. We want to wash these out for two reasons. We want to get rid of the mites and all the fungus, and it's easier to take the cocoons out and wash them and get free them of any mites or fungus. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. So in doing that, the bleach will disinfect the wood blocks and make it uh, a much safer and healthier bee population for next spring. Okay. And then you put in the refrigerator the eggs? Yes. Once you, once you wash and rinse the cocoons, you'll put them on a towel that'll soak up any excess moisture. Okay. And then you can put them in a container in the fridge because it's a nice even temperature. Yep. And they're still dormant. It's a dormant insect. And so they're sleeping. Okay. And they'll be ready for next spring when you can take them out of the refrigerator and place them into the attic of each house. Right each house has an attic. And this is a safe place for the cocoons to uh, start hatching and repopulating. Wow. Yep, it's very wow. simple. This is safe enough for them. They'll sense the air temperature, but birds cannot get in to get to eat them. I like it, I it's, like it. It's very simple. Carl, that was great education. I, I love what you made here. It's all basically earth friendly, recycled, clean, um, supporting the environment. Um, amazing stuff. And we've been doing it for seven years, so we know it works. People have come back for more houses, and they've done comparisons between tube, tubes and reeds, and there's, okay. you know, they can make houses much different ways, but this is a this is a winner, it works. Okay, so that's an alternative for you guys. I explained tubes, like on mine. This is a very much more effective way to do it, especially if you want to be dialed into your little blessings of mason bees. I just got this one today to basically put out of my chicken yard because I love mason bees. Awesome. And I so appreciate you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. this information. <laughs> I know Carl and Carl, how do you beat that? And I will put his link on Facebook on this page so you guys can look more into this and always, always be happy. Awesome.